I'm going to go to my model pepper mill. I've taken off the top and I'm going to lay this down right on top of my maple mill. Now I'm going to not quite line it up at the very bottom because I'm going to reach in there with a parting tool to square off that end. And then the same thing at the top. I always cut them just a little bit long. Now on my maple mill, I'm going to mark some of my critical areas where I want to actually put some of the features. So like right here, this is going to be the beginning of this cove. I'm going to mark the bottom of the cove and then the top of the widest part on the body of the mill. So that's going to be right around there and kind of in this area here. I'm going to come up here to the neck where I really want it to start working its way up and narrowing. One more spot up near the top. And those are going to be the areas that I want to use as the features. To mark those so that I actually have some nice round, uh, some nice easy ways to see, I just turn on the lathe, put my pencil on those marks, and we can see them all the way through. So there's the bottom, the middle of the cove, kind of the high point, the beginning of the neck, and the the next step that we're going to do is actually measure out the critical areas with some calipers and use the parting tool and make it so that we have some, uh, some waypoints to actually cut and turn. All right, now we're going to deal with some of the critical dimensions of the actual uh, pepper mill. And so I'm going to use a set of calipers here. I'm going to measure out the base. That'll work there. I don't really worry about how many inches or centimeters it is. The next step is I'm going to use my parting tool, which is right here. And I'm going to transfer this measurement right onto there using the parting tool. So I'm going to go up to this very first line that I had drawn a little bit ago, and I'm going to put the parting tool right on that. I'm going to use my calipers there in the groove that the parting tool leaves, and we'll actually get it so it's the right size. Little tight, little tight, little tight. And there it is. So I didn't have to remove that much wood. I'm going to do the same thing at the very bottom. That's going to be a pretty good dimension. I'm going to go back to my roughing gouge. And between those two areas, I'm going to cut a flat spot. There's my bottom. Now, I said I left a little bit of room down there at the very base because I knew that I wasn't going to end up being 100% square. So to square it up, I'm going to get in there with my parting tool and just nip off just a little bit of the bottom. So that it's absolutely flat. It'll now sit 100% vertically on a tape. Okay, we have the base done. Now let's take a look at the cove. I bring in my calipers. Right about there looks pretty good. I'm going to again go to my parting tool. I'm going to line that up right there on that center line that I had made for the, uh, for the cove. Start to cut a little groove with the parting tool. Put the calipers on there. And let them work their way in. Now I'm going to do that in all the same spots. I'm going to measure on my model that I made earlier, and I'm going to do that with the body, I'm going to do that with the neck, and right up there with the very top. Once I have all of those critical areas measured, I'll go ahead and start using my roughing and my detail gouges, and really start giving this blank a shape of a peppermint. some details to the pepper mill. And the first thing I'll do is the cove here. 
I have marked out where I want the middle of the cove to be. I used my parting tool for that. I can see that I've got the beginning of the cove starting right about here. Now you can see the trace of the, of the uh, parting tool. And then I can see I'm going to have a bead that's going to work its way right down into the base of the cove. My cove will end up being a little bit deeper than it was uh, than I measured it with the parting tool. And let's kind of give this a whirl and see how things work. I'll start here with the bead and come down to it. Start going the other way now. So you can see we've got the beginning of that cove going. It's still a little bit rough. I'm going to keep working out my detail gouge and get it nice and smooth. I'm going to also add some little details, a couple little shoulders in there, so it'll uh, have a nice little touch there at the base. One shoulder. And a second one. Looks and feels pretty good. I'm going to continue doing that same kind of thing up here at the top where I work my way into the neck and then up here at the very top. And in just a few short minutes, you've got pretty well the shape of a pepper mill going. I've got the shape of the pepper mill done here. It's squared off at the bottom and at the top. And now we're ready to do some sanding. Uh, when you're sanding, you need to be very careful because you don't want to erase any of the details that you just spent your time working on. So be a little bit loose when you come up to those areas. I generally sand the big elements first and then I get up there nice and close for the larger elements. So when I sand, I always want to have some dust collection. I've got my dust collection tube right back here. I'm going to turn that on and get it going. I just finished up with the 150 grit. Uh, I like to always sand with the grain one time and I just do that by hand. You don't have to do too much, it just erases some of the squirrel marks that might be left behind. Get over those big beads, be careful with the details again. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna do the same thing with some 220 and some 320 sandpaper and then we'll be ready for some finish. I've just finished up with the 320, and I'm just giving it that last couple of little hand scrubs there. And one thing that I like to do when I'm done turning with, or I'm sorry, once I'm done sanding, is I like to grab a handful of some of the wood chips at my feet, and I like to turn the lathe back on and just rub those hand chips or those those wood chips in there. It kind of burnishes the wood, makes it almost shiny, a little bit deeper look to it. We've got a completed body. We have the body completed. Looks pretty good, pretty shapely. Now we've got to work on the head because that doesn't look quite right. I'm gonna do the same thing 
that I did earlier where I'm gonna put that onto the chuck. I'm gonna open it up so that it stays in place. It should be pretty round. I'm gonna rough that down a little bit. And then I'm gonna start to work to add some of those details. I'm gonna do the details the same way, where I use the calipers on the widest parts and on the little bun at the top and make those marks on the on the headstock, or on, I'm sorry, on the, the headpiece, and we'll soon have the top of the pepper mill. head is finished up I cleaned it off some mineral spirits and we're just gonna finish it up the same way that we did with the body and then we'll be ready for some assembly so I start with the brown bar get it in there in all the spots and then buff it off with the paper towel Okay, got a nice high gloss polish on there. The next step is going to be assembly. So this is gonna come off. This is what the end product is gonna look like. It's got a couple nice little beads on it. Now the mechanism that I'm gonna use is this right here. It is called the crush grind mechanism. And there's a few modifications that you have to do in order to make it work. You got to get rid of all the tabs and all these little fins. Right now, I'm just mixing up some five minute epoxy. This is what's going to hold the mechanism in place. And that looks pretty good. I always like to put the epoxy on the actual piece, on the actual mechanism. So I'm going to kind of smear it all around down here. I did a test fit a little bit ago. To make sure that everything would be squared away inside of the mill. I'm going to feed this into the bottom of the mill. Looks perfect. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the top. Now this white piece fits into the head. I'm going to get the epoxy on there. And this is what will actually crank that shaft that makes it so the pepper mill operates. The last thing you need to do is put the cap on the top, and by following these steps, you'll have yourself a brand new pepper mill. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed.